It's one of the oldest species on Earth, but sadly, it's endangered. But can tourism be a part of the solution? Hello and welcome to The Travel Show, coming to you this week from Sri Lanka. Now, baby turtles start off life with the odds pretty much stacked against them. For every thousand that are born, only a handful survive until adulthood. Later on in the program, I find out how tourists are helping with the conservation efforts. But first, let's head to the Spanish capital, Madrid. It's a city which in recent years has seen its vibrant art scene hit by austerity measures. But as Rajan finds out, because of the cutbacks, performance art and theater are finding new forms of expression in the most unusual places. <laughs> Not for the faint-hearted. Welcome to Macbeth in Spanish, set in the ruthless advertising world of 1950s America, the so-called Madman era. The actors sometimes are so close you could lean over and straighten their ties. Maybe not. They look a bit preoccupied. The murder and intrigue all take place on one floor of this residential building, and everyone pitches in behind the scenes which makes it very compact and a challenge for the actors. There is something really interesting too about the audience being so close because they become part of the show, of the play. And they are the play and their energy w w w sort of feeds us. <laughs> this looks like too much fun. I want to audition. No sé cómo decirlo. No sé cómo decirlo. Ni mi lengua. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should leave it to the real thespians. But in austerity hit Madrid, this inventive way of staging theatre has come about as much by necessity as design. One radical reaction to the crisis is this, a squatted building taken over by protest groups, which runs free classes in anything from dance to writing and microtheatre. They tell us that you can only do art in museums or in big institutions, and that's not true. You, like, art is something that has no relationship with money, and this is what we're trying to prove. At this former butcher's shop, they've taken the budget theatre concept to its logical extension. This is micro-theatre at its most, well, micro. Five different original playlets, each 15 minutes in length, are each performed six times a night, with up to 34 performances in total, in tiny, intimate venues like this. And at four euros, or five dollars a shot, it's affordable for most and short enough to be bearable if you don't understand a word. These are stories, and the story doesn't have to maybe be an hour and a long or two hours long. In 15 minutes, you can tell so much in 15 minutes. So, and an, an, an intense story and the proximity to the actors, I think, is what makes this such a special space. At times, it resembles being in a crowded railway station cafe waiting for your departure to be announced. But it's become so successful that one play has been adapted and extended into a full-length feature film, with another on the way. And the concept is being exported around the world. Proof indeed that there's nothing wrong with making a drama out of a crisis. Rajan meeting the actors in the Spanish capital, Madrid, living up to Shakespeare's famous observation that all the world's a stage. And if you're planning a trip there, then here are our top travel show tips to help you on your way. If you want to snag a bargain, then head to El Rastro, Madrid's largest open-air flea market. With over 3,000 stalls, you'll find almost everything and anything from clothes to antiques to local handicrafts. It's open every Sunday morning and can be found in the winding streets in the city's historic center.
For the latest in the visual arts scene, why not try Matadero Madrid, a former abattoir converted to an artist center. The exhibition and space change every two to three months reflecting the works of the contemporary arts sector. Like this breathtaking video installation by the Cuban artist Glenda Leon, which continues until April the 26th. And one final tip. Plan your trip around a festival if possible. There are many throughout the year in Madrid. Some of the biggest festivals include Dos de Mayo, San Isidro and La Paloma. Carnivals in February sees many people in wonderful costumes parading down the streets to music. Finally, on this week's program, I'm in Sri Lanka, the pearl of the Indian Ocean. For many travelers, it's a tropical paradise full of palm trees and endless golden beaches. But I'm not here to sunbathe. There's many reasons why people come to Sri Lanka, and one of the best is its varied wildlife. It's got elephants and leopards. The one that I'm here to see is one of the world's most ancient of creatures. I'm talking about the sea turtle. There are only seven species in the world, and five of them are found here in Sri Lanka. Yeah, there we go, have that. I've come to a turtle hatchery on the west of the island. It's a place where tourists can come to see turtles at all stages in their development. This hatchery isn't just a place where people can come and visit the turtles. They say they're helping with the conservation of the species. Sea turtle eggs are a delicacy here. Poachers will often sneak out at night to steal them from their nesting mothers. But thanks to the turtle hatchery tourism, things are changing. These locals aren't taking the eggs to sell for food. Today, many of the freshly laid eggs are sold to hatcheries like this one. Here, the turtles can safely emerge before being released to the ocean. Well, not quite all of them. A small number become lifelong residents, and like it or not, these lifers bring in the tourists who fund the whole operation. The role of the hatchery doesn't stop at just collecting eggs and seeing them through until they're born. They actually look after the less fortunate turtles as well. Take for instance Loggy here. Uh, she's got a malformed shell. Now in the wild, she wouldn't live past a couple of weeks, but she's four years old, so that's testament to this little hatchery here. Hey. And it's not just the tanks that need cleaning. Um, obviously, they get a lot of algae on the shells because um, it grows within the tanks and in the wild they'd have fish that cleans them off them. But we don't seem to like me scratching her back much. She's trying to wriggle away. <laughs> Stay there, you. Hello there, Loggy. She's not that happy though. <laughs> no, she wants to be put back. She wants to be put back. Wriggle too much, the one. This isn't the only hatchery in Sri Lanka. They are dotted along the coastline, and whilst they've helped reduce the number of eggs poached for food, they're not without their critics. And so Dr. Lalith Ekanaika is a marine turtle specialist. He's concerned about how some of the hatcheries are using the cute newborn turtles to get more tourists. They have energy in their body uh, to swim uh, two days to the deep sea to protect from the predators. They're swimming in the tanks and they will lose that energy. And then after three, four days, when they release the hatchling to the sea, that hatchlings wandering around the beach and a lot of predators eat that hatchlings. So what would be the ideal situation for the turtles? At least release 90% of the hatchling soon after they emerge and keep only that 10% for their tourism program. So we've got green turtle, we've got olive ridley. Dudley Pereira is this hatchery's owner. He told me that they released the vast majority of hatchlings straight away. We are releasing the last year 27,000 baby turtles the last year. Same day and we are releasing the 95%. The other 5% we keep in a few days. 
Operations like this may not be perfect. It's a shame to see wild animals confined to tanks. But even their critics think that hatcheries can play a role in turtle conservation. And for visitors and volunteers, they certainly offer a chance to learn more about these magnificent creatures. Six weeks on the glorious beaches of Sri Lanka helping these cute little turtles. I can see the appeal. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this week, but join us next week for this. Addy takes the water in Venice, looking at a new anti-flood system being built to try and save the Italian city from going under. In the meantime, you can keep up to date with all of our travels whilst we're on the road by signing on to our social media feeds. All the details should be scrolling across the bottom of your screens now. And don't forget, send us all your favourite travel pics and videos by hashtagging BBC Travel Show. In the meantime, from me, Henry Golding, and the rest of the Travel Show team here in beautiful Sri Lanka, it's goodbye. Oh,